So the coach of the European team is our 145 pound interim champion, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor! Oh, he tagged him in yes. the left. This kid came out of Ireland and burst onto the scene. Looking to finish the fight. That's it. It is over. all over. He's got 14 wins in a row and has ignited the world. He's in front of Jose Aldo screaming at him, and Jose Aldo is smiling. I find maybe it's a little bit more a tougher uh, scene to come up on the European scene. You know, there's a lot of skilled fighters in Europe. It's a good thing to see their, their journey, and I'm happy to be here. And um, I look forward to giving them some advice on how I would approach this situation and just sit back and watch it unfold. It's a, it's, it's a, good, it's a good thing. What's up, gang? Good afternoon. I don't see Uriah as a competitor, you know, he is just there. He, he is, he's not on my level, you know, I smoked his teammate. Chad Mendez stepped in and kind of saved the day on a short two-week notice to fight for World Championship against a very tough guy. Here we go! Chad's hurt, Chad's body's hurt. It's rough seeing one of your good buddies, someone that you've mentored, get in there, throw it all on the line and, and come up short. Ten seconds! Oh, Brother, when you guys take a picture of us real quick? <laughs> get, get, get his chin out of our shot. Good. It's possible, my man. This thing's no close. <laughs> no close-ups with that thing, my God. <laughs> if this was Uriah against anyone else, it would not be what it will be. He is an aging competitor on the way out of the game. He has been around a long time. This is about other young people's opportunity, you know, the next generation. Are, is Ireland known for its cantaloupes? <laughs> uh, the I massive can't. head this but guy's got on face. looks like a damn cantaloupe <laughs> on a toothpick, this guy. If they're not known for cantaloupes, they should be now. <laughs> He's a real emotional guy, and he can be up one minute and down another and, and likes, to, likes to talk a little smack. I wouldn't say we have, as of right now, a huge beef, but I could easily see things escalating. Let go. Brian Hall specializes in jiu-jitsu, and in particular, the 50-50 position. It's a position where the legs are entangled. Ryan is an expert in the position, and very few people are. It was quick, it was smooth. It was his move, and he executed it. Winner by heel hook, Ryan Hall. Yeah, Lee was lying on his feet, he was patient. He awaited his moment. He leapt in with a straight right hand and put his opponent down. You had a good deal with your eye, yeah? Just be, just be glad that you don't gotta face me. That's what I'll say. Such fear, man. I'm, it's over, I'm overcome with it. Do you believe I'm a fearful man? I believe I'd kill you stone dead. Honestly, the only reason why it would even be close between us is because you probably have about 25 pounds on me walking around. It's the only reason. You're right, I would The only reason. You. I mean, I would like to see you pull your massive head out from in underneath my armpit. It would not happen. Because your hair, cantaloupe, the Irish cantaloupe. You're, 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 you're the worst of your team. You're the worst of the team. I'm 36 years old. The worst of your team. It's got to sting. It's got to sting. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm coming for that. In the prison cell. <laughs> Leave this place. I train at uh, Straight Bus Gym, Ireland. We have many, many good guys training with us, like Carl Bendred, Ash Daly, and uh, Conor McGregor. Yeah, the, the first fight to get into the house is probably the hardest, because I have to fight Europeans, and they're all, you know, yeah. good guys. Yeah, yeah. The Americans are really... Whoever didn't make into the year, see, you know, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the B yeah. team.
Oh! 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 Be forced. Be forced, Adam. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Adam, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Get me in here. Patient. Adam, boy, get in position. Adam, oh, oh, oh. Oh, Just keep the hands flowy and be patient. He had him shelling up a lot. It was a good exchanges. Oh! Oh, boy. Connor, only time he really got invested at all was when it was his his buddy fighting, and you got to see him, you know, squirming around and into the fights. I gave Artem the first round. A majority decision for your winner, Mehdi. Third round, should have been the third round. Yeah. All right, both. Great fight. That was a great fight. You don't win him. You don't be proud, but I guess. That was a great fight. Should have went. You won the fourth round. Could have gone either way in the second. You got that takedown towards the end. It at least should have seen the third round. It didn't go the way I obviously wanted it to go. Got in a little bit of a brawl, more than I would have liked to. I should have been the house, my son. Alana, some good shots, man, from the south past stands. Very, very well. He's, he's pretty solid as well. Yeah, of course, I'm, I'm disappointed from my teammate, but, you know, it is what it is. We will carry on, I feel, a performance like that. And the fact that he steps in, no matter what, he, he will lace up the gloves one more time, I feel, you know. He, he will definitely get a run out. One thing this is a little more AC. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't have it all. We're the ring girls. That's right. That's a good point. You should walk around with a car and check that <laughs> Big similar. <laughs> Next, this next contract, we, we gotta get him a chin. Instead of a suit, let's get him a chin. You're so lucky that Chad Mendes <laughs> rolled off the couch drinking beers. <laughs> Took you down with a <laughs> whim. Not one clean, one clean shot you hit, and nothing. You had absolutely nothing from it. If it weren't for the size of that head, you'd have been out cold. <laughs> The head saved you, he the hit, Irish cantaloupe like head saved you. He hit like a flyway. Like are, you related to, are you related to, to Channing Wahlberg? He's are you so related convinced. to Channing Wahlberg? The whole game you are was so delusional, my man. The whole game was so convinced. And I butchered him. I don't know exactly what I said I would do. I'm serious. I put the fear of God into him. You could see fear on him. I broke him down, bust him to the body, wobble him on the feet. Yeah. Mm hmm. Watch the back of the head. Watch the back of the head. Watch the back of the head. Ears. Move, fighter. Move. Move. That's it. That's it. In the second round, both guys come out guns a blazing. Um, Jason caught Tim with that shot to the liver. And it, it's tough to recover from that shot. He got him on the ground, and that was it. The fight was over. That's it. That's a good fight. Winner by TKO, Jason Gonzalez. Cantaloupe's provided by McGregor. What's a cantaloupe? It's a melon. <laughs> it's a melon. Uh, uh, face. Face. Uh, face. <laughs> I could probably beat him with one hand if it was a, if I was the same size. I'm gonna have I'll to you what, too. I tell you what, because they won't feed feed me. To, they won't feed you to me. Yeah? Let's let's follow me. Let's let's follow me. On, 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 on our own thing. It's, we'll come here with a nice new fight to set it up. All right. and we can bring cash money and do it that way. Okay. Let's do it that way. Let's do it. All right, then. We'll put arrangements in this, and then we'll see. Then we'll see what, okay. what, what kind of talk you're all about now. We'll see what you got there. Done. 
the old cantaloupe? Oh, uh, buff eggs. Get some of that? <laughs> exactly, look, buff eggs. Oh, it's funny celebration. <laughs> this is gonna be fun, my man. Yeah, we'll have fun. It's gonna be <laughs> good. Fun with us. It will be good. I am happy with the team. I don't really feel an emotional connection to them or anyone here for that matter. You know, I'm just here to handle business, but um, I look forward to growing uh, in this journey myself and, and witnessing their, their rise and, and giving them some advice on what way they can take it and what, how to approach the game. Gentlemen, welcome to the Ultimate Fighter. Good luck. This is an amazing opportunity that they must take this with both hands. They must recognize that they are here for their, themselves. You don't need nobody to hold your hand. You go in and handle your own business, and that is ultimately how you climb to the top of the game. That is how I climbed to the top of the game, so that's why I feel they will go on to dominate. I mean, the stronger team is definitely Team Europe. Pleasure. I'm gonna be a guy that, that can relate and can mentor and can connect with the guys. And I'm not sure if Connor has that. You know, he's got a house full of people that are at his whim. They don't move unless he says they move. They don't do this unless he, you know, snaps his fingers. And um, in a coaching situation, you're, you're working for these guys. And I'm not sure if he's gonna be able to handle that. Just a message to Connor, put your suit on and comb your beard, because we're going to war. So you want to gotta team Europe? USA, you guys. <laughs> Can you get Team Europe into the changing room for me? We'll be all warmed up. Let's do it. Sorry. Let's put them all in here, innit? Yeah, we're gonna see you later. Right? Yeah. Your house, whatever yeah. you need. Yeah. Right? Have fun. Yeah. It's been a long day. 16 back-to-back -back fights. And these guys have to be exhausted, but Connor's ready to get down to business. He calls everybody aside and wants these guys to know what they're in for this season. Have we got everybody, yeah? All right, this is everyone, Team Europe. I've been thinking of what way to approach it, so I wrote out some notes of what way I feel is best we'll do it. And just to let you know where, where I'm at with the whole situation. The coaches I'm bringing in are coaches that I've trained with for many years. So you're gonna get really good uh, training. Um, but me personally, I'm not trying to coach any one of you. Everyone is here for their own benefit. Forget Team Europe and forget Team USA. There is no friends in this business. You are either here to win or you are simply a filler. However, I'd advise you all to find comfort amongst each other in this situation because this is about making it to these fights fresh and that is it. Your hard training should already be done. You should already have your sparring and your rounds done. It's about keeping loose and getting through your fights now. We're all on our own journey, as am I. So this is it, you, hand, you come in here and handle your own business. You don't need nobody to hold your hand. They will be next door. This is what I want to get across. They will be next door touching gloves and pretending to be friends and not one of them will truly give a about the other. Even after the fight's just there. Team USA, USA, that's all in times of stress, scared individuals bunch up. It's a sign of weakness, so recognize it. You're here for you. Eventually, you're gonna wipe out that team because they have not had the road that you have had. The Europeans, we have come up tougher. We have had a harder road to get here, so you're gonna be a lot more tougher than them. So when they get wiped out, you're gonna come back around and eventually have to face each other. So just keep the training at a flowy pace. No competitiveness, there's no need for it. You're already all fit. Keep yourself fresh, I can't stress that enough. Don't expect me to step on the mat and show you how to throw a jab because that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to give you a platform that you would not have had otherwise. The show ultimately is created to create world champions. We're not doing this to create journeymen, you know, so you must let them know that this is business here. Come in and handle your business. When the fights are all said and done, they are done. Count your profit made and plan your next move. And that's it, that's all I got to say. Congratulations and welcome to the show. Boom. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh. Conor McGregor was honest. He uh, he told us it's not only about Europe versus USA. It's about you. You have to think about yourself first because at the end of the day, everybody is just fighting for the opportunity to get this contract. What's up? 
What's up, man? What's up, bro? What's up? How you feeling? Good. I don't really pay attention to what other people train. I know how I train. I know how I feel I need to train. And I know my approach to combat is ahead of the game. My team's approach is ahead of the game. So I'm confident in what we do. I'm just going to carry on doing what I do and doing what we do. Uh, MMA gloves, gum shield, T-shirts off. And that's it. No shin pads, no, no nothing. I think this type of training right now that we're going to do is something that we should do the most. It should be the most, because it's, it's as... It's, as, it's what you're going to experience in there. The bare body, the gloves, no shin pads. It's, it's good for the mind, this one, because you can feel what it's going to feel like in there without damaging the body. It's going to be my partner throws a shot. A combination, whatever, kicks mm, mm, mm. Then I throw a shot. And try and find the targets. That's something as well, when you're hitting pads, you can't really find the, the body or, you know, you, if a lot of people, you see them holding pads out here and try and find that spot exactly where you want it. Shot selection is one thing, but you must be able to put the shot right. If you throw a shot with no pads and it's an elbow bone or something, you can mess yourself up. So I think this, this way of training, you can find the shot clean and it will make your shots a lot more accurate. I just love the way Connor trains. I just love the principles he's trying to, to give us. He's so athletic and he has so special movements and you can see this while he's teaching it to us. Now I start to understand why he's such a special fighter. Connor have a lot of good coaches. He have a good uh, ju jiu jitsu coach, a good wrestling coach. Just look at his results. I'm looking forward to work with them. Damn. That was a perfect pace. That's what my coach John would say about a session like that is that's upgrading your software without damaging your hardware. You know what I mean? So you're not getting injured, but you're getting, fl you're feeling the positions and also, that was a perfect session, great job. There's some solid guys, people that I feel are really skilled on the feet. There's some people that I feel are really skilled on the mat. So it's just about just blending them in together. So I'm, I'm happy with the team. Gather round, boys. Just got a real quick one, and I'll be out of your hair. Fights to get into the house were awesome. I love the fights to get into the house, and I felt like some of the decisions were questionable, and I, I hate when I see good fighters possibly getting left behind. So I wanted to give the coaches the opportunity. If you could bring back one fighter, who would you bring back? So let me start with this. Shaking things up a little bit here. The fights to get into the house this season were phenomenal. So I've been thinking, and what I wanted to do was, I asked these two, if you could bring back one guy, who would you bring back? No secret here, he picked Artem to come back, okay? He picked Johnny. So I'm bringing these two back. Welcome back, Johnny. Go ahead, jump in there with the, with the crew, man. You guys are back. You're not wearing your high heels today? High heel dress shoes? No, they're python skin. Python? I hunted them myself. You <laughs> don't even know what python is in America. Something, no. It's something sewer. your little bum ass couldn't afford, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you think? Yeah, I do think. You're wrong. The banter between Uriah and Connor is pretty good. It's pretty funny, keeps us all entertained. But Connor's just too fast, so I think Uriah doesn't say too much because he knows Connor's too quick waited for him. All right, the first fight from Team USA. Ryan, the wizard, the most interesting man in MMA himself. Hall, come on up, buddy. And from Team Europe. We're going with Franz. Yeah. 
it was a wrong decision for them, I think. Yeah. All he's going to do is try and roll into that position. You know, all you got to do, once that length is there, if you have them arms out wide, his roll, his drop will have to be from here. So it's easily, you'll easily be able to see and stuff and back the to the feet, keep the body, jab to the head. I think we're better matchups for Ryan, safer matchups than this one. I think the body type won't suit Ryan and, and, and Franz's game. I think the body type and, and, and the range that Franz will have will trouble him. I think Ryan will lead a few shots and it'll be interesting to see how he handles, how he takes shots. Can, can he take a shot? Yeah, like a stab like in a my stab. foot. Rat it in, because if I push, it's the impact, yeah. it, it's a push. Whereas I whip it, it's very hard to stop it. What I feel by the way they picked uh, Ryan is that they fear exchange. They picked him in the hope of a quick sub and no, no clashes, no exchange. It shows a fear of a fight. They don't want to fight. When you're breaking him down with them shots, you're not only breaking him down, you're breaking the whole team down. You know what I mean? They are afraid of it. When Franz starts breaking them down with straight shots to the body, straight shots to the head, if he rolls into that, frees the leg, catches clean ground and pound, every shot he hits Ryan with, and every time Ryan breaks under those shots, it won't be just Ryan. It will be the other team that will break as well. Always control the feet. With control of the feet, he can't swim underneath. I always have control of the ankles or the feet. Boom. So there's no swimming under. So he can't swim his leg under here. I snuck in the 50-50 escape because obviously Ryan Hall specializes in that 50-50 position. He won inside 30 seconds to get into the house. He rolled into a leg lock. It can mess with a person's mind at that position. So rather than put him in that position, we kill it before it even happens. And as simple as possible. And that's it. Good session. When the entangle happened, it was a moment where he could have controlled the legs and freed his leg, like we had done in the gym previous. Control the feet, free the leg, back to the feet, pick him off with the shots. If Franz had trusted his base, but it's a very tricky position and it can mess with your head. Where's the McGregor roll? <laughs> the McGregor, what, the money roll? <laughs> One dollar bills yeah, yeah, on the inside and then a hundred dollar bill stacked on the outside. I always hate it. I hate it on you, buddy. <laughs> Flip flops and the jeans. You look great. You'll understand when you move out to Cali. I, I don't understand that because you said, I, I, huh? I thought about it, you said we work all the time so we don't have to wear a suit, but really, I work all the time so I can wear I know, a suit. I know, that's the difference. You know, that's the difference. It, yeah. It's a difference of culture. You've been thinking about that, I can tell. But it is an interesting difference. We it walk is. all the time not to wear a suit, but I, from where I come from, we walk all the time to wear a suit. Yeah. To enjoy hard work. You know what I mean? Yeah, we like comfort. Flip flops and jeans, you look <laughs> You look great. No, I'll take a nap in this thing if I need to. <laughs> you need to dress your age, honestly. Dress your age. You're 50 now. I can't you're, even you're closing in on 50. I can't even grow a beard. <clears throat> when I can grow a beard, I'll dress my age. How's the leg? Good. Good? That's what I like to hear, bruh. So Connor has taken a very interesting approach to coaching. He has a practice in the morning and a practice at night. He doesn't show up for the practice in the morning. He lets his assistant coaches put them through a light workout. And then he shows up at night and is actually very technical and, and very hands-on. It's beautiful, Saul. That's you all day. That's you all day. There's no stopping it. Once you're deep on that grip and the posture's correct, you're always ending up on top. 
the training has been gone really good. Uh, I like the concept we are having. We train lightly in the morning and then in the evening we train a little bit harder. It's a real honor to work with Conor McGregor. When I say go, 10 seconds fast. Go! Even though he said he's not going to be here that often, he is here often enough to, to help us out. And time, all right, same again. He throws the shot and enters into a double. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. I can't imagine of any place else where I'd like to be more than being here, training with these guys. They have a very good spirit and they have very profound techniques. Come on, it's Conor McGregor. Conor has given this, this attitude like he doesn't give a Like he could care less. Um, but he actually does care. He's actually a really good coach. He's very technical. And he cares that these guys are doing what he is telling them to do. Yes, beautiful. At a good training session, Conor showed me a lot of good stuff uh, that I think that I can utilize on the fight. Nice. Beautiful. Welcome to my home. Hey! How are you, brother? Welcome to my home. It's like this, look like at this. So we're over here coming to visit the guys at the house and watch the fight. There's a big UFC fight on Fox, and we have uh, TJ Dillashaw. TJ, he's a guy that I recruited out of high school. You know, he started his career with us, and he's a world champ. And TJ's the main event, defending his title, and it's a big fight for us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main Dillashwank. One man said he's done. The other said he's breaking. This might be it right here. That's it. Dillashaw. Look at him. It's his back. DJ Dillashaw. Unbelievable. It is all over. Dillashaw remains a champion. Outstanding. Outstanding. UFC at the weight champion of the world. Boy, TJ Dillashaw defended the belt. Got to hang out with the guys a little bit. It was all in all a good night. TJ didn't look good though, huh? Oh, he done well, he done well. I'm happy for him. I'm gonna get you some sandals. <laughs> I am. No, no, Since you're moving to Cali. No, no, no. Since you're moving to Cali. <sighs> Brow is broken, huh? from the get-go. Very flat. His reactions remained the same. Kept walking into that left hand, left high kick. That changed the course of it in the first and in the second. But I think you should man up and fight him now. He, you, you brought him out of college. You said you brought him up and then Dwayne came in, took him from you, and now he's winning the world championship. And You should man up now and, uh, and get that fight, I feel. That's, that's your only fight, really. We'll see. It seems like Connor keeps trying to get me in and TJ to fight each other, which for me is not something that's attractive, even though he's got the belt in, in the 135 pound division. It's one of the reasons I came up to 145s and I said I'd rather fight Connor. I, I believe it, it's his only fight. He went running from you guys. He, he, Uriah took him out of school, built him up. Dwayne comes in, takes over and then takes the champion. I, I told the truth. I told the truth. I see these th comments going back and forth and I, I realize, man, Uriah is an absolute pussy. Took some kid out of school, showed him the ropes, brought him in, showed him the path, gave him, gave him the opportunity. Brings in a stand-up coach to coach the gym. He takes over the coaching and then takes TJ with him and then TJ goes with him. I think it's a bitch move on, on TJ's part and I think it's a bitch move on your eyes part not recognizing it. <laughs> Recognize the enemy. Recognize the oh, enemy, that's the enemy. what I will say. Stop being a pussy. Man up, that's, that's the fight to make. You ain't got nothing left. That's the only fight you have. I mean, what else has he got? That's pounding. 
That's Tony. Sudden victory, third round. Yes. Sasha, stay on the feet, Sasha. Stay on the feet and let the shots go. Very, very bad. Very poor. Very, very poor. Very poor. Right. Second round he broke. He shot from the corner, pulled guard, and gave up position in every every sequence. You don't want to pull guard with a guy that hits as hard as he does. He continues to go to the ground and Con doesn't listen to Connor at all. Snap up! 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 up. And Connor completely flips out. Ah, stay on your feet! Stay on your feet! Stay on your feet! Connor starts losing it, which is hilarious, because he told me he wasn't planning on getting too invested in the guys. Mount is there, Sasha! Mount! Mount! You guys are He's got armpit sweat rings and throwing his sunglasses, and it was too funny. He's dominating every exchange on the feet. It's frustrating to watch. You know, you don't want to see people throw it away. Sudden victory, third round. Let's go, Sasha! When he shot from the bell in the third round and then pulled guard, there's nothing more you can do. There's nothing more you can do for the kid, you know. It's, there's only so much words can words can do, so I was just letting my frustration show. What the Some people either want to get in here and fight, want to change their life and want to do good for their family and their people back home, and others don't, or they can't. They crumble under the pressure. Don't be going to your back like a bitch! Pussy! For not being emotionally invested, you sure got emotionally invested? Yeah, well. I think you need to show up to morning practices from now on out. Yeah. Help these guys out. This is yeah. their opportunity. Good job, brother. Break them. Way to break up there. Good job, Brits. Connor likes to talk a little smack. The guy doesn't like to lose. I don't care what he says. Now, this is a little. I'm gonna start turning on him. That's ridiculous. Carry on. Ridiculous. Carry on. Ridiculous. The sweat, brother. Stressing. Our next matchup, I think, is going to be another loss for their team. Tell you one thing: if we went coaches versus coaches, we'd smoke you in a second. <laughs> 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 it's like, look, dude, let Connor be the personality on this team because he's clearly the one with the personality, not Artem or the rest of the guys, right? Uh, he's like, Connor's like the, the, the hot chick that will only hang out with ugly girls. That would be a demolition job. Oh, yeah. Team runner up. Thought you should change your gym's name, too. Hey, we've got a couple champions, not yeah. intern champions. Hey, hey, hey. Well, I was TJ, a world champion for TJ a couple years. TJ. Hey, TJ ain't part of your Lance team. Lance Palmer. Don't, there's no point in getting that It's twisted, man. TJ ain't on your team. TJ took, took over your <clears throat> You know there's no fear going on here, bud. What? There's no what? There's no fear going on here. There's no fear going on here. Yeah, I know. I know. Takes one to spot one. You do need to show up for morning practice, though. Listen, world champions don't need their hands held, so. I... That's true. I gave Connor a little advice to maybe show up and give these guys his full effort if he's going to get so invested and pissed off at him. I'm running my own show, so I don't. I'll, yeah. I'll give them a platform. I'll have my coaches teach well, them. Well, don't get so mad at the poor guy. You didn't even help well, him I out. Don't, like, the kid threw it away. Yeah. It's not nice seeing a kid. You didn't help him out showing up well, for half the practice. Well, what can I do? You can't teach a kid to fight in that short I'm time. teaching my guys. How to fight? Teaching that, my guys how to be champions. That fight. 
Come on, that's like a roundy shot and pull guard from the I corner. I got you. No, I, saw, I know that. It's you can't fantastic. teach that. You can't teach that. You either have it or you don't. You either want yeah, but don't get don't. mad at the guy for it. That's him. Well, yeah, yeah. We're all individuals. Yeah, well, exactly. So I don't give a Yeah. Fuck. You don't want to fight. But you don't give a but you do give a Well, you either want to fight and want to come in here and win the show, or you don't. If you don't, well, then well, I don't give I'll a about you. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it. It is what it is. This show is the You, be, put, you broke a perfectly good pair of head... Uh, Sunglasses. I could have used those sunglasses. What are you talking about? You threw your sunglasses, broke the sunglasses. Well, when the guy is told to stand on his feet and he's winning every exchange on the feet and in the clinch, and then he shoots from the bell and pulls guard, you know, it, it, it gets frustrating. It is what it is when you see kids throw it away. He won the first round. He was dominant in positions. He, the only reason the first round would have been even closer <coughs> is he pulled guard. He gave your boy uh, the fight. He didn't, there was no significant strikes landed on the feet by your guy, and your guy did not score one takedown. He actually was gifted everything, so... I don't know you if see he, that I don't is, think he was given it, he took it a little bit. All right, all right, all right. Uriah said something about showing up for morning practice and, and be there to help these people, or something along them lines, but world champions do not need babying, you know, that's the wrong approach. That's, that's Uriah's approach, but my approach is to focus on my own journey. I'm on my own journey, and I'm dominating the game as, as world champion. Um, I will simply lay down the platform for these people, to train under my coaches and go and win it. You don't need to baby people. I have to just be real with myself and realize that I am going to be emotionally invested in this. When you see what happened to Sasha, I got frustrated with it. Um, I just wanted to see a little bit more fire. And I, I'm upset the way I even reacted during the fight. I was learning too once and I made many errors in my career as well, so... Sash is a good kid and he has skill and he has work ethic. I shouldn't have got so wound up over it. One, two, kick. Oh, oh, oh. That's good. Oh, oh, oh. Always keep that fist fully closed as well. When you're shadow boxing, don't get in the habit of doing that. Never gonna punch nobody with an open hand. Especially MMA. One, two, kick. One, two, kick. Even although uh, Connor is a very busy man, he's on all the evening session. Training with him is a pleasure and it's just uh, so inspirational, you know. If he goes against me, he throws a one-two high kick. Even that goes above my head. Everybody, you throw the right hand. Everybody leans out of the way or pulls back. I lean out of the way, boom. It's there every single time. Some stuff he told us is just like, just soak it in, it's just a pure fight talk, you know. Oh. And you're always going to get that even if he tries to step into mount. Trust that grip. Trust it, because it will always save you in these positions. You'll always end up in top position with it. So go again. Yes, beautiful. Beautiful, even if he does try to step over into mount, scoot the hips back, end up on top. Oh, ooh. You know what I mean? It's, that's what I'm saying. Get that mechanics where your head is up, your back is flat. You have that gorilla posture. That's good, Dave. That's the one. And walk around with it. Ooh, now drive. Yep. Yeah, it's beautiful. Find comfort in this lower center of gravity. So when it's time to let it go fully where you shoot in, it will be like nothing. He'll go through the air. I'm going to keep the pace exactly as is. Yes. It's interesting seeing these two different styles of coaching. Uriah Faber, it's all about the team. And all of his success has come from Team Alpha Male. It's what he knows. Connor, his style is all about the individual. And so far, it's not really working out for Team Europe right now. Yeah. A solid, solid walk. That's how you do it. That's how you fight. Have a seat. You gotta relax. That's sort of book my said. That's two and oh. Wrap it up. That's two and oh. You gotta oh. relax right now and get your deep breath in. Just relax, okay? Another round? I'm sure there's another round. Okay, that's it, Dana. Great job, my That's it, guys. Great job. That's what the all about. That's it, guys. All right, all three judges scored this fight 20 to 18. The winner by unanimous decision, Marson. That's how you do it. Perfect. You break them with the exchanges. Great job. Great job. 
After today, Team USA, I don't think they are looking forward to the exchanges with the guys from Team Europe, so... And um, that's what I wanted to go out and have Marseille pine them shots home and show them that fight. And what, and what, what else was he saying about position? Position over everything. He tried to dive on the back. He tried to... He tried to... He sacrificed position for submission, and he ended up on bottom. Position is everything. Position of dom dominance. Guys, Marcy, 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 Marcy. It was great to get control back to uh, Tim McGregor, and I'm super happy to go to the next round. Oh, man, Connor. Is America, this? bro. I'm not gonna let you be the only one wearing clown <laughs> shoes around here. At least you give a, an effort this time, so I, I appreciate that. I got your shoes in the, in the car, actually. What's yours? Your sandals are since you, since you gave up on Ireland, it came like already. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna see, we'll get you those. <laughs> the newest immigrant. Team McGregor gets their first win. Connor has basically been saying, with the right matchups, Team Europe will destroy Team USA. Connor is now in position to do this. He has control. Good fight, Tom and Marcin. Very good fight. Uh, congratulations, Marcin. We have control. Um, our fight pick, Saul Rogers, and he'll be taking on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Billy. Hello? Billy. I think Billy's a good matchup for him. I think he, Billy won't be able to take Saul's pressure. Saul will get on top. He will remain on top, and he'll break him down. It's your time, Saul. All right, good fight. Good Let's look. Go, go hard, man. Yeah, boys. You hear his name? No worst nightmare, bro. Yeah. And I went like that. Yeah. Where is he? Like, <laughs> and you. <laughs> he was like, your finger. Who him? Uh. <laughs> It's always nice to take your mind off things. So for them, they are in the house 24-7. They have no access to their people back home. They have no access to TV, no music, no nothing. Cheers. So we came out here to get some food and relax and rest. And, but then they'll go back into the house. They'll make weight and they'll fight. That's what we do. We fight here. That's what I, that's what I do. I don't do nothing else but this. Just bring a, I, just bring a load of stuff, please. Is this the only, is this the menu that's in? I believe that's the menu. Just give me everything. Yeah. I must say I really like Connor. He is a nice guy and he knows what he's talking about. Staying relaxed, staying calm, and do your thing and believe in yourself. All these things. It's like, yeah, it's perfect. I say saggy, they say bomb, saggy. Oh. We train it with the best fighter on the world, Conor McGregor. Can you imagine that? This is a dream for a lot of people around the world. So for me, this is a dream. I live in a big ass house with a nice pool, with all food I want, and I train with the best fighter on the world. Oh, we all have one, huh? I'm happy to be here. I laid it out to the best of my knowledge and I feel confidence has risen. I feel they realize that we will all benefit from this. Yeah! Domination! Domination! Beautiful! Very, very good. Very, very good performance. That's a beautiful performance, Saul. Patience, position, push up, everything was clean. That was phenomenal. Saul never lost control of this fight. He manhandled Billy. He actually showed today that he's probably one of the favorites to win this thing. In the, in the, on the corner, they were like, just do something, just do something. Like the team. Oh, that's this. Like, just do something. Yeah. That's, what, that's what they said, just do something. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great 
<laughs> but it wasn't not, not the coach. I didn't hear what the coach was talking about the other team. Like, just, just do something. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Looking slick, my man. Thank you, sir. Looks uncomfortable. I can't lie and say you look slick, but... Yeah. You look, you look, look comfortable. comfortable. You look comfortable. I am. <laughs> and intelligent. It's 120 degrees out there. <laughs> <clears throat> you smell like tuna fish, though. <laughs> the heck is that? Yeah, it's, uh, I smell like tuna fish. I don't smell. No? No. It's this guy, then. I made it, dude. No one thought I could do it, but I made it. As soon as I found out Uri was coaching Ultimate Fighter, I knew after my fight I needed to come out and help out and support the team and support you know, his team as well and uh, give as much knowledge as I possibly can. So what we're gonna do is, this thing is the money maker. So I'm, I'm laying the jab and as soon as my right hand hits, my head gets off the tracks, get him to guess on that kick, right? I want him to start slipping my right hand. As soon as he starts slipping my right hand, the kick comes right behind it, right? I've built my team, Team Alpha Male, and. Currently, we have the world champ at 135 pounds, TJ Dillashaw, who, after I had a uh, failed title shot, I put TJ out there. I was like, give my boy a shot. You know, he's ready. And he came in and shocked the world. And it's all over! TJ Dillashaw! Congratulations, TJ Dillashaw. Throughout this 11-year process of having this team, I've brought in a coach named Dwayne, and he was down and out in his life, came in for one year and did a bunch of promotion. You know, we all helped build up his name, and then he bounced. You see what he's doing? Just do his drive-by. He's already positioning himself here. Connor has been harassing Uriah about TJ Dillashaw. Team Alpha Male, which is Uriah's gym, brought in Dwayne Ludwig as their striking coach. And TJ Dillashaw wins a world title. Then Dwayne leaves and goes to Colorado and opens up his own gym. TJ, who had been with Team Alpha Male since he was a kid, ended up leaving and going to Dwayne's new gym in Colorado and training with Dwayne. He's still with Team Alpha Male, but he did leave. So now Connor is saying he betrayed you, he's a backstabber, and is really riding Uriah hard about TJ Dillashaw. I want to be here. Now my overhand is going to come right over the top of this. I go out and train with Dwayne Ludwig out in uh, Colorado. You know him and your eye don't see eye to eye. They're not the same kind of people. Me and Dwayne have had a close connection, so I trade half my time in Sacramento for my camp and the other half's in Colorado. I'm going to switch this way and then come back with my cross. I like that one a lot. Sick. Yeah, I've been aware that Connor has been talking crap to Uriah about me being a snake and, and trading teams and going out to Colorado and train, you know, and uh, I've been expecting him to say something. Oh, that's what we're waiting for. What's up? What are you doing, man? Fashionably late. You should take a... Yeah, you take a nice try that as well. Hmm? <laughs> How the f*** are you going again, buddy? You can get <laughs> thrown around in front of everybody. We'll, we'll go at it if you want to go at yeah, it. Yeah, I'm OK with that. So after the weigh-in, everyone's waiting to do a photo shoot. You know, we have to sit around with both teams talking, and Connor starts talking a little smack. The champ does what he wants. Thank you. I do do whatever I want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You've never touched that belt in your life. I always fell short. <laughs> but the guy you brought up touched it. My TJ? Is TJ's here with us. Here with us? He ain't with you. All right, he stopped. Joe. You wasn't saying that TJ was sitting there. Who? <laughs> Who? Me? Yeah. Did I see TJ? Didn't see him here. Would I not say that to that little twerp? Right here. Little snake in the grass he is. Oh, he's a little snake in the grass. TJ is the guy that I brought up from our crew when he was in high school. TJ was in my corner for when I fought a world championship. He's been my right hand man. So for Connor to like act like he knows what our situation is is bizarre. Where's the little snake? Where's the little weasel? Has he got Dwayne with him? Him and Dwayne, come over, take the show, take over the show. <laughs> they take over your gym, they'll take over the show too, I'm sure. That's how people do to you. They just run you over. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've told Uriah many times. 
he needs to recognize who's with him, who's against him. He's bringing TJ into the gym. TJ's here for his own benefit. He's looking to get a fight against me. But I think Uriah needs to realize what's happening, that someone is infiltrating his gym and his training and trying to take what he has. He took his belt, he took a coach, he took his gym name, and now he's looking to take probably Uriah's last hope at a big money fight. It's time to realize what's up. Yeah? I think so. I think you just don't want to fight either of us. I'd book the Tewis at the same time. I'd like to see that. We don't get tired. Oh, so that's a dig at Chad? So, yeah. you're, so, you're oh, dig, you, dig, so two, you dig at each two other? Two weeks notice. That's the, type, that's the type of stuff you go at, yeah? You dig at each other. So you don't get tired, but Chad does? Is that, was On that a two weeks notice. That was a little dig at Chad. So maybe you're the snake. Maybe you are all snakes. I think you're the snake. Maybe you're all snakes. Hey, snake. I came up with the same thing. Like day one. Day one. Like Loyalty. Loyalty, that's the sign of a world champion. That's the sign of a world champion. Loyalty is a strong thing for me, and I respect loyalty a lot. But I absolutely despise, uh, despise people who are disloyal, people who bite the hand that feeds them. I cannot relate to that in any way, shape, or form. I certainly feel TJ is a little snake in the grass. You know, he's in here for his own benefit. So I simply told that to him, and I mean, the truth can hurt. That's why I can't let you sit and talk about TJ without saying something, because that's boy. That's loyalty. What, you gonna do something about it? What are you gonna do? I'll do something about it. Well, do something then. Do something then, you Do something then, you, something, then, you Phil. What, you gonna do something about it? What you gonna do? I'll do something about it. Well, do something then. Do something then, you Do something then, you Phil. You do nothing, you little twerp, yeah? You do sweet for God. Take care of your underwears. I'm gonna you, man. <laughs> what? Guys, settle down. Yeah, we yeah. 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 the boy with big mouth. Yeah, I try to watch what happens. I got yeah. all of you. You too, man. They've yeah. got snakes in the ground. Hey, hey. you. Dwayne it's Lutter you. Is a and the snakes with that. Hey, snakes for him. You're stealing him, bringing him in here. Recognize what's going on. You know what I mean? You're looking like a pussy doing that. I simply spoke the truth. Tempers got flared. It was it was pushing and shoving. It was close to blows, but. It was nothing. Ah, there's a little snake in the grass right there. What's up, hey, little boy. How's it going? Are you lost? Definitely lost. Where's your mommy, little boy? <laughs> Unfortunately, I was back getting some coffee, and uh, you know, of course, I walk away when Connor wants to decide to talk crap about me, you know, and try to get underneath uh, Uriah's skin. Yeah, I'd like to congratulate you and your you and your coach, Dwayne. Oh, Great you. win, man. Well done. Appreciate it. Uriah thinks Dwayne's a snake, though. What do you think of that? Different opinions, you know. So you, 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 you're with Wayne? Yeah, man, he's a good coach. And what, you, he took you out of college? Team. He took you out of college and you just ditch him? No, 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 I'm still there, dude. No, you ain't still there. <laughs> All right. You ain't still there. You, you, you pretend you're still there. But you ain't still there. That's up to him to man up and realize that. Yeah. You gonna ditch a guy that came... Dwayne came in and held pass for a week. <laughs> and you went and ran off with him. Okay. It's this... Took, took you out of college, hey, gave you the, gave you away. Hey, I recruited this guy man out of high up. school. Yeah, and he ditched you, so man up. Man up and recognize. Man up and recognize. Man up and recognize. That yeah. has the belt. That's your opportunity. He came in and, and took you and got out of there. I'd rather fight you, to be honest. Well, you, you, how, when, how are you going to fight me? I'm, I'm fighting Jose. I'm, I'm fighting big. You're down here. I, You're fought, down here. I fought Jose. Yeah, there. and you got your ass whooped. Have your you whole team him? got your ass whooped by him. Chad got his ass whooped, and I whooped Chad last week. Do you know what I mean? You aren't, you aren't, you aren't, you aren't on that level. off the couch, you beat you up for 10 minutes. Hey, I will, I will say you did a good job. You need to take that approach, because he eats with Dwayne. And what, what did I tell you? If eats with him, he's the enemy. That's what? it. I say, we lie, I say we split the room in half and see what the happens. Yeah, let's do it. Down, let's right? do it. Let's 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 do it.
Big champ. Yes. Connor seems to forget that one of the reasons why he has an opportunity right now is because guys like BJ Penn and myself laid the foreground. I've had a world championship belt, you know, long before he even could grow a beard or, you know, could cover up the zip marks he's got on his face. Keep that fake belt warm, dude. Yeah. I'm not worried about what you're gonna say, man. You're never gonna touch that, you little twerp. Dude, I'll come to your ass, dude. You're never gonna touch that. Please. You little short ass bitch. You got the real Shit. belt, why we want a fake belt? Yeah, I don't need your fake ass belt. I tell you who doesn't have it, you're right. The guy who brought you up. I'd love for TJ to try and come up. <laughs> fight call. <laughs> yeah. The leg. Uh, no. <laughs> would be destruction. <laughs> what I liked about that whole situation, to be honest, it was like, from us, we just kept quiet and just Connor, you know, did all the talking. They were like a bunch of hyenas. Yeah, yeah. Man, 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 just screaming and shouting. Yeah. And he was just like line, cutting them all down. And he was speaking through, you know, he was saying how the situation But that, when sometimes people like don't like hearing the truth. Connor pointed out facts to them, and sometimes when you tell people the truth, they don't want to hear it. But they don't like hearing it, and then they get really defensive. It was their verbal battle. We had nothing to do with it, so we just we had his back if needed be. But other than that, we know he can stand up for himself. Thanks for waiting, guys. Since you've migrated <laughs> to America, join the rest of the immigrants like I'll my family. Them. I'll take them, but yeah, not too shabby. Uh, yeah, they're pretty slick, but they're I slick. am an Irish man. You're welcome. Down home. I you appreciate welcome. that. You I welcome. appreciate that. Uh, I'll have to get you something Irish now, yeah? Yeah. $29 you spent on them? They're on the <laughs> discount rack. <laughs> Surprisingly, Tan actually goes for the armbar, and it looked like he had it. But Martin escapes, takes his back, and sinks in the rear naked choke. I think we outdid you today, though. I like that toy. That's yeah, a good one. That's, That's, That's good one. Yes. <laughs> you know, Lance and TJ went out. We went out till like five in the morning in that last outfit. night. With the no, two, two nights, nights ago. ago. Hi. With those outfits, no shirts. It was a good time. <laughs> Vegas is on watch. They have a lot of clubs out here, I hear. <laughs> I know you know that, Artem. Of course you do. Of course. They I, told I'll me. drop your name next they time uh, my buddy wants to go. <laughs> uh, get, a, get a good table. Get a good table. Uh, that's good. I knew that. I could tell you, that. You, you get long. double the tips with two asses. <laughs> 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 Team Europe ties it up, it's three to three. Connor is now in control, but there's only three preliminary fights left. There's only so many fighters to choose from. So this next pick is absolutely critical. All right, great fight, boys. Tan and Svensson, very good contest. Um, our next fight from Team Faber will be Jenkins. Yeah, let's get it, baby. And from Team McGregor will be Artem. Both Artem and Jenkins like to stand there and punch each other. Who's the tougher, more durable? I don't know. But you want a Jenkins anyway, so you Artem. Get it. Artem has heavy, heavy power. He catches you with shots from crazy angles, and you know all about them, so I feel he will catch him with heavy, heavy shots. Jenkins will end up leaving his chin exposed and get finished. All right, good fight. Good job, guys. Get it, Jenkins. Get him, guys. Artem is my teammate. The team I'm with currently are not my teammates. We don't know each other. We are, I, of course, I will have a 
stronger bond and a more deeper connection with our team. I'm not going to fake it and say I don't and it's all ego because it's not. I was here for our team. I want to get the knockout so Dana gets his checkbook out. <laughs> <laughs> When I was 14, Russia was, you know, the economy was pretty bad. There weren't many jobs in Russia, and we just thought we have to go somewhere else. And at the time, Ireland was booming, and we just thought this would be a, a good place. I know Artem since many, many years ago. He walked into the gym ready to fight, competitive, wanted to test himself against the best. He kept showing up and showing up and showing up, and we had many, many fights in our, in our rise up. And he's a solid, solid fighter. He came up the hard way, and... Uh, you can tell that he's a highly experienced and highly skilled martial artist. His, his stand-up and his approach is very, very underrated and overlooked. He has a very awkward style and he packs a lot of power. And he has experienced every, every situation imaginable inside that octagon. So he is full of confidence right now. His confidence is sky high. And he will secure the KO, no doubt. Arlen. You said you fight 145s before? Yeah. That's what your weight is. 145, yeah. 145. Well, he's fought about 170 as well. Yeah. yeah. Any weight, man. Good play. Yes. I, can, I can the fight your whole fight team. Here, I might consider it, yeah. yeah. I'm holding Did auditions. You fight for the, yeah. for the title. No, 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 no. You'll, nah, be, you'll, nah, you'll, nah, open, nah, up, yeah. you'll open up the prelims like yeah. you always do. But uh, I'm going to hold auditions but we'll do it to see who's style, on you in the card. Me and you and Sky open up those <laughs> prelims. Well, but when I, I'll give him a title shot. You get a title uh, shot, Arnold. <laughs> this is going to be a stiff KO. Oh, Absolutely perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh. Get in there. Oh. Get in there. Oh. Beautiful R10. Good, I promise you a good fight. Woo. A Russian Irishman always keeps his word. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. Beautiful performance, R10. Artem went in there and destroyed Jenkins. He hit him with some big punches, bombs he hit him with. And Artem proved to me and everybody else that he deserves to be in this competition. Stop, stop, stop! Yes! Fourth yes. round KO, baby. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Both stances, every shot in the book you have. Perfect, our team. I am happy for my team. That's what we are about. We come to fight. Um, so it's a beautiful, beautiful feeling, and I'm enjoying every second of it. That's a performance right there. That's a dominated, that's, that's a, K, a bad, bad KO that they're stopping him with. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, let's wrap it up. Let's, let's finish the job. Absolutely. We're getting through the season, what? It's probably in good as hell. Right, and not, not knowing, you know, you see in past seasons, people crumble, or people you know they need to go home, or they panic. Everyone's just been in a great place in that in, mentally here. And to come through a place like this, in a strong mind, you can come through anything, you know what I mean? Like, it's easy after this. And all you do, you get a call to fight on a big stadium show. You show up, fight week, and then you fight, and get a big, fat check. You know what I mean? This is the hard thing, and you're like, easing through this. For the Ultimate Fighter, it's a great platform for young fighters to come through, you know. It's a, certainly, it's an opportunity to the big time. It's a good experience to be here and to be doing this show. So, I'm having, we're having a good time. So we're going somewhere, it's kind of a mystery right now, to do the coaches challenge, so I have no idea what it is. I'm told it took a lot of preparation to get it together. So, I'm just ready for anything. Y'all ready for this? Ah. I thought, he said go, go, go. So I just went. I thought we were, I thought we were going. He's already all nervous, this guy. Okay. Settle down, okay. bud. It's going to be all right. <laughs> Not quite. Yeah, yeah.
I think I might have buried Chad out here somewhere. Ah. I think I might have dumped Chad's body out here somewhere. Around his this looks Wait. familiar out here. Uh -oh. <laughs> here it comes. Here it comes. Gentlemen, welcome to the Coach's Challenge. This is my favorite part of the season. No pressure on you, all the pressure is on the coaches. They have to perform, you kick back and relax today. Today's Coach's Challenge will be the airdrop. Both coaches will go up in a helicopter. You will take five watermelons. You will drop them onto the target. There are points for each section of the target you hit. The bullseye is 100 points. At the end of the airdrop, after five watermelons, the coaches with the most points win the coaches challenge. They get $10,000 for themselves and $1,500 for each one of their team members. Gentlemen, good luck today. Dana flies in on a brand new chopper. Ariani has my money in a briefcase the way I like my money. I, I only accept money in briefcases. It's, it's a good experience coming out here seeing all these choppers and cameras and I would have liked it a bit more physical, you know what I mean? A bit more athleticism, explosiveness. Because he would have been buried in the desert if that was the case. But I still feel my accuracy is too precise, even with watermelon.
going into the last round, Uriah's winning 85 to 70. So this is the last shot, which will literally determine who's gonna win the coach's challenge. in on his last shot and hits the bullseye, which is 100 points. So now it's 185 to 70, no matter what Connor does. Even if Connor hits the bullseye, he's done. It's game over. Uriah wins. The bullseye. What's that? That was the bullseye. What's that? Oh, no! <laughs> Woo! Game over! <laughs> game over, baby! You gotta adapt to this! The challenge. I feel, I feel sick as a dog over there. Yeah, but what can you do? It was a good experience. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I don't like losing. Congratulations yeah. to to the little buff-faced twerp. Don't be shy, Americans. Let's go get your coach. Oh man, I feel great winning that challenge. My guys were so pumped up, got my coaches some extra cash, and man, I, I could tell Connor was very bothered by the whole situation, and that felt good too. Oh my God, I bring, this is yours, my money, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, baby, that's, how, that's a little foreshadowing. So Connor, what you need to do is, you, you, so you're, you're the one with the day-to-day -day knowledge so your matchmaking should be putting guys that you think are the best against guys that you think aren't. You should think about this because you might need a job in a little bit once you spend all that money. You got You might need a job. Being matchmaker could work for you. So you do a good job you today. I haven't seen my new contract. I, I saw. The, I saw the house that you're renting. I saw the house that uh, you're renting. Stop. When you bring sixty to seventy rental. million dollars a pop a show, well then guess what? You get the you get the little perks like that. The next fight's gonna bring 90 yeah. to 100 million. You know what I mean? You get these little perks when you do this that. This guy, they, dude, I've got You don't bring that. I know how that works. You don't know about that. what you got. You don't, I you know don't, my numbers. I just got a check for my Aldo fight last week. It was five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what the and you And that's, got. And, and you know what? No, I do know, I knew know that that's that's not your it money. Tripped. I get in in a chunk. Yeah. Straight. Listen, the straight Conor McGregor roll. The ones on the inside. You get dripped your money. You get your money The outside. High you get your money drip. The bow tie. You get you your money drip. You, you get your money drip to you Look, because your numbers are low. Listen. When my numbers are so <laughs> high, I well, I came in here and signed a little yoke and I went into my bank account and the full number was in there. The yeah. money wasn't dripped. Then that means That's that. how you do business. Yeah. You you get a paycheck six years down the line for the elder boy because you, the numbers aren't great. Rightfully so, your money should be dripped. Dude, you should only get your money it's when we feel like paying have, you. Let me tell you that's that's about what really should happen. I've, I, I, I bring it, it in and I, get, I take it as well. Don't you worry about yeah, I that. I bet you take it. Don't that's you what worry I heard. about that. <laughs> I bet you take it. You take your time and dress up in high heels and bow ties. Okay? <laughs> I <laughs> put on my flip flops and I know about business and you don't know. <laughs> What are you talking about? Oh. What, what business? Your, your last fight bombed and you lost. Now let's your talk about this. last bombed and you lost. I came well, up in well, weight well. just to fight you. I'm about let's 20 pounds it. smaller let's than you. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. You Good. know, you know that fight. You not know only that is Tom not happen. extinctive on the ground, there's another guy in this room who's not extinctive on the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good thing you're a big guy and you got a punch. That's about it. Well, well, yeah, well, 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 this is going way south. We gotta make fights here. <laughs> Let's match me up with this. Oh, I asked you. Ask you I asked you to you match. I asked, I asked him long before the show. I said, uh, give me this. Dana, in let me, he spoke hey, many times about my native Dana, country. Dana, I'll kill him hey, on home, home soil. Said this. In, hey, in, as a warm up for the hey, Aldo fight, I'd kill him. Hey, but they wouldn't do it. They you know, wouldn't sacrifice you know your old ass from. They know why. <laughs> I'm not scared of. Yeah, okay. I never said you were, but it's an Uriah, easy fight for Uriah, me. Uriah, I mean, I Chad, Dana, you. how excited you are! Fight. We just signed the fight. I, I, you I, I, said it would never no, happen. I gotta make these fights. Did Dana, you see? You? I asked for this fight I in asked Dublin. For the fight. I asked for the fight in Dublin as he a warm up to the Aldo fight. Look, Dana, tell him what I said. I said I'm not doing this show. I'll tell you exactly what I said. I'll tell you exactly what I said. Listen, I'll tell you exactly what I said. Two days before this show, I said I'm going home. I'm not doing this show. Nobody gives a about showing the two people can't fight. I've got to sit here and be around him and I don't get the punch the head off him at the end of the show. That's It's a 
fair enough, he's on a loss and he's he's on his, on the slide and the fight means nothing. Yeah. But it's 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 still a fight that makes sense because the, 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 the Irish you, fans know him. You could bring him on. Exactly. You haven't fought Frank. Exactly. So in a nutshell, yeah. Frankie's Frank. a Frankie's a weaker <laughs> version of Chad. Listen, both of you. <laughs> I've been doing this for a very long. <laughs> Time. I know what I'm doing. So these guys keep talking about how they want to fight each other, they want to fight each other. They're not going to fight each other anytime soon. Conor McGregor, who has the featherweight interim title, will face Jose Aldo, the pound for pound best fighter in the world, and the, the, the only champion we've ever had at 145 pounds. Those guys are going to fight in a unification bout December 12th, and who knows, maybe these guys could fight down the line, but not anytime soon. Hi. Thank you. Hey, what are you, you, hey, <laughs> you think this fight might happen now? What, did you change your mind? No. Oh, no. Tom, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Tom. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, boys? How are you, man? Good. How you feeling, right? All right, so I literally have never done this for anybody. I told you guys, you guys fought your ass off getting into the house. Woo! You fought great through the, uh, through the preliminaries, so we threw you guys a pool party. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So listen, party your asses off, have a blast, and get ready for the quarterfinals. DJ, hit it! This may not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's just a reminder about the real world and, and kind of the bigger goals of having fun and enjoying yourself. So I think this little a reminder about what's on the outside is going to help them perform and, and do the things they want. They've been complaining to me, bring us out, bring me out, but I don't baby, I'm not trying to babysit nobody, so I'm not trying to bring, bring these men out to have fun. Dana recognized that these fighters were getting frustrated, brought a lot of nice friendly women in to have fun with them, and that's what happened, we had fun today. The way that these guys have fought from getting into the house through the entire preliminaries, now we've got a little bit of a break here before we go to the quarterfinals. And it gives them a time to relax, have some fun, and recharge. Tomorrow it's back to training, and five days from now, the first quarterfinal will take place. All right, guys. Everybody bring it in. It's time for the cameras to go. That was an awesome fight. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Artem finally dialed it in and landed that big, crazy left hand that he throws. Artem just, just puts it to him and finishes the fight. Saul and Ryan, you know, Ryan is a tricky customer. You've got a guy like that who specializes in that area, which is a tricky area, the 50-50 position and the leg locks on. It can, it can, people can panic in a situation like that. Yeah. Squat, 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 yeah. just come down. This is first, yeah. okay? And you're safe now. Saul, I knew it was a perfect matchup for Ryan because Saul has the base and he has trust in his base. So he works some sequences of freeing that leg. Yeah. There's no magic tricks. If you this way, yeah, it's good he will finish you. Every session I've been putting in leg lock defense and just being comfortable in the 50 50. So whoop, knees this way, zoom. So I'm confident, more confident than ever. I feel like I've got much better striking than Ryan. I've got much better wrestling. So I kind of want to go in there and show him that this is not jujitsu. 
I'm a well-rounded fighter, and I'm not here to f- but I'm here to win. Ten. Beautiful, beautiful. May have a third round right here. That's done. That's a wrap. Two nothing. Fight's over. In the second round, when Ryan actually did enter and was in clean, the sequence that we done previous in the gym, trust your base, trust your posture, control his foot and elevate and free the leg. And he done it, and he actually done it once, and Ryan transitioned beautifully into the second leg. Saul again, stayed confident, free the second leg. Now he's free, now the position is nothing. And what, what are you left with? You're left with Ryan on his back, trying to call Saul on. Back up, let's go. No, let's go. He was actually baiting Sal to the ground at one point, or at least like doing this, which I mean was not going to happen. But you know, Ryan threw it out there. He might as well ask, right? <laughs> Good job, Ryan. Good fight. All right, Judge Griffin scored this fight 19 to 19. What the? F- Judge Camijo scored it 20 to 18. Judge Bird scored it 20 to 18. The winner by majority decision, Saul. <laughs> Well, that's that. Oh, no, one more guy left. <laughs> you like that. They did a good job. My guys, I'm proud of my guys. Yeah, no, good that's fights. Awesome. Great fights on the season. Two good fights, two dominant fights. Team Europe, Team McGregor, taking over. Brother, how are you? How are you? I'm, uh, you know, yeah, good. How's the body, legs, everything? Good, 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 good. Artem is fighting Julian now. Julian's light on his feet. He backs off a lot. He plays that game well. He has beat two of our guys with that approach. But Artem will track him down and KO him. The key to victory is to focus on ring control. You go in and you get lazy with him and start walking around and circling with him, and then it's a 50 50 fight. Nice! I want him switched on, hunting, cutting the cage, banging his shots. I want him to react off Julian's singles. Julian is a single shot fighter, he comes in with the teep, he comes in with the straight. That's the shot. Off the kick, left hand, right hook. So much power in him. That's, that's all I want him to react off them teeps. Yeah. Boop, boom, boom. Oh, Adam has good ring knowledge. He's very aware of octagon control, and he just needs to use it. In the last fight, he didn't use it. He began to use it towards the end, and then KO'd him. So he will use it early, and he will knock him out. Every time you're banging that shot. Beautiful. Time. Adam has been around with me. We've been on this journey a long, long time. Many, many wars, and so many areas of the globe we fought on. So many little small shows for no reward whatsoever. It's been a long, long road. And that's it. Just go in and be dominant with position. It's only been two and a half years since Conor made his debut in Sweden. I still remember staying in that little hotel room. I had to sleep on the floor. We couldn't afford an extra room. And now I came over to Las Vegas for his last fight and staying in a massive mansion. You know, you see all these things, but you still find it hard to believe. You just, it just feels like I'm living a dream right now. And now I get to be part of that dream. I get to go out in front of millions of people and perform, showcase my skill. I think there are many great fighters on Team Faber, as there are many great fighters on my team. But I feel the approach that is taken when training is very different. I laid it out to the best of my knowledge and I feel everyone has responded well. They realize that this is the correct way it must be done. I wasn't trying to get emotionally attached to any of these people, but that's what happened. It's an experience of a lifetime, this is. I look back on this with good memories. To see them all train in the gym, to see the fights in their house and their stories, and then just to watch it all unfold. It's perfect, it really is a, a great experience, and I'm grateful for the opportunity. Oh, look at them! Oh, 
I didn't think I didn't think I'd see you again. You're back around. Good to see you, my friend. I didn't think I'd see him again. So Connor walks into the gym, and who's sitting over on Team Faber's side? Jose Aldo. I didn't know what to expect from Connor, if he was gonna go crazy, if they're both gonna go crazy, but it was actually pretty mellow. Aldo was supposed to fight Connor, but had to pull out due to a rib injury, and it's a massive fight. It is a massive fight. So Connor ends up winning the interim title. Jose Aldo is the pound for pound best fighter in the world and the only featherweight champion ever in UFC history. Now they're set to finally face off December 12th in Las Vegas, decide once and for all who is the featherweight champion of the UFC. Jose is a runner. He is known for pulling out contests, but I must say, it's good to see him. Let's do this. Yes! Julian's a phenomenal fighter, but he's a single shot fighter. Julian tried to hit and run. Artem punted him down. Julian was looking to escape. He could not escape. He overextended on a right hand. Arthur banged the left hook. First round KO. Every single fight, Arthur wins. My emotions get the better of me, and I scale the octagon. And I got punished for it today. I jumped in the cage and ripped my brand new pants, but it is what it is. It was worth it to see my teammate go out and do what he done. Back to back to back, first round KOs. I've never been more prouder in my life. I told him after, I said, with that knockout money, you can buy me new pants. <laughs> Many years ago, Arthur walked into the gym and he was there to fight. He was always competitive. He'd always show up. If you ever needed rounds or if you ever needed anything, Arthur was always there. Beast. He's been with me a long time, especially recently with this journey. We've went on the world tour together. He came out here to Las Vegas with me. He's been in Las Vegas with me the past four months. Money shot. It's air shot, that yeah, was. Yeah, that's it air is. shot. It's been a long, long road. And to see it all shape up the way it has, I'm ecstatic. I've never been more happy in my life. Respect. They're a solid, solid fire. Solid fire. This is actually a great season with some very exciting fights. I am very impressed with how deep the talent pool is in Europe. And even though Connor initially said, I'm not gonna get involved and you guys are either gonna make it or you're not, he actually ended up being a very, very good coach and, and was very motivating to the guys. Ladies, ladies first. The biggest fight of the year, it's the biggest gate we've ever done. Nine million dollar gate. The world will be watching this fight. Conor McGregor, who is the interim featherweight champion versus the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, Jose Aldo, has not been beat in 10 years. Ireland versus Brazil. It's gonna be one of the biggest fights ever in UFC history. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it now this time. Don't, don't pull out this time. There's no more pulling out this. You're either gonna do it now or you're never gonna do it. Your legacy, your career is done. I wish him a safe training camp, and let's do this for you. Awesome, thank you guys. I will be there December 12th, whether he's there or not. Can you even imagine what a Conor McGregor chose It's the fight everyone has been waiting for. Interim featherweight champ Conor McGregor finally gets the chance to take on current UFC featherweight champion, Jose Aldo with the undisputed featherweight belt on the line. Sim, a partir do momento que a gente vencê-lo, acho que é isso, vocês vão conhecer o outro lado dele. Porque aí sim ele vai parar de falar, ele vai ter que botar os pés no chão e ver quem realmente ele é. It's going to be the biggest fight in UFC history. It's going to shatter records. It's going to be an event like no other. Pound for pound, number one, the notorious Conor McGregor. The wait is finally over. We welcome you. Inside the MGM Grand Garden Arena. He's got serious knockout power. He also has some really unorthodox movement. The interim champ, Conor McGregor, who's riding a 14-fight win streak, 
has earned 16 of his 18 professional wins by knockout. Look at that, Fitchy's in town, Larry Fitzgerald. Cardinals outstanding this year. The notorious one, Conor McGregor. The interim champion, two inches taller. Conor McGregor will have a four inch reach advantage. <laughs> at all times, obey my commands at all times. I want you to fight hard, but I want you to fight clean. If you want to touch gloves, touch them now. Good, step back, let's, good luck. Connor looks extremely loose, and Aldo looks like he's feeling the pressure of this moment. Here we go! Connor relaxed and smiling. Oh! Straight left, and Aldo connected with a left right afterwards. Boom. Left hand, out cold, hammer fist. Incredible that he connected with a punch as his brain was shutting off. The notorious one, the new UFC undisputed featherweight champion of the world. And he's fast, but precision beats power, and timing beats speed, and that's what you saw there. You did it all, sir! Congratulations!